This is Halloween season, and with that comes a particular intrigue into witches, witchcraft, and the like. But many people in Connecticut are not aware of what influence their state has had on the history of witchcraft in the United States. If there were a series of unfortunate events and someone nearby who could be scapegoated, they could be associated with witchcraft. And let me be clear, witchcraft then meant you were aligned with the devil, with dark forces to cause harm to your community. That's Beth Caruso, a local author who has done considerable research about witch hangings in the British colonies of North America. A lot of folks are familiar with the stories of witch hangings in Salem, Massachusetts, but what they don't know is that the first witch hanging occurred in Connecticut. Beth told me that the first victim of witch trials in the United States was a woman named Alice Young. She was hanged on May the 26th, 1647. We don't have any specific records of why she was hanged, but we do know that during that year, across New England and specifically in Windsor, Connecticut, there was an influenza or similar epidemic that took hold of the community and wrecked havoc on the community. But I think the most significant impact that had an influence on Alice Young's accusation was the fact that four children died in a cluster right next to the home of Alice Young, all the while her own daughter survived. Beth said that Alice Young was not the last person in Connecticut to be accused of witchcraft, and that not all of the accused were women. A lot of the uh, witchcraft accusations, of course, they were a result of misogyny, but there were men who were accused as well. In Connecticut, there were two men that hanged. However, most of these men were associated with women who were accused witches. Um, in Connecticut, it was John and Joan Carrington. We know John had sold a musket to a Native American, which was a big no-no. And um, just committing a previous crime, selling a gun to a Native, or stealing something, that would often put a person in a, a you know, precarious standing in the community where they would be a person targeted for witchcraft when something really big went wrong. So other than that, we don't know why John and Joan were accused of witchcraft, but um, they hang together. Um, there was one more couple, Rebecca Greensmith and Nathaniel Greensmith. Um, Rebecca from the record, it sounds a lot like she was mentally ill because she said things like, yes, she was co you know, she was cavorting with the devil and she had been with men and devils. And um, when it was time to name other witches, she named her husband and he begged with her and he pleaded and he said, you know, no, I'm not. Let me take care of the children. But she wasn't gonna go down alone and who knows what her reasons were for that. ConnecticutHistory.org notes that witchcraft was an offense punishable by death from 1642 through 1715. While that was a long time ago, it seems odd that more people are not aware of this chapter of local history. To be fair, perhaps Connecticut shouldn't be too proud of executing an innocent person for such frivolous reasons. But maybe there is something to be said for using the annual Halloween intrigue surrounding witchcraft to better educate people about history even if it's a bit dark. I think there should be an exhibit somewhere where they really do go into our witch trial history and where there's a place where more research can be done about this. Unfortunately, we don't have the plethora of records that they have in Salem, so that's more difficult to do. In Salem, we have a precise hanging place um, Proctor's Ledge, and recently they've identified exactly where that is and put him on memorial. In Connecticut, we are not sure where the hanging site is. 
um, Minister DeLoss Love, he wrote in his book about Hartford that the hanging site was down Albany Al Avenue, uh, somewhere near, you know, a distance from town on a hill. But unfortunately, we don't have any primary source or original records to verify that. There were forces going on here that made this first spark that led to Salem years down the line. It was the first example they had. And usually when there's a first for anything, people look back and they think about the first case and they see what happens. Unfortunately, again, we don't have the record, so it's so hard to know. But it would be great if more people could piece together more and more of these histories.